Hi, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian, and today I'm going to show you three ways that you could sidechain your 808. First, let's take a listen to our kick in the 808 as is. Okay, so the first technique that I want to show you is the most common technique to sidechain, and that is adding Fruity Limiter onto your 808. And you're going to leave it on the compression side. And what we're gonna do is take our kick and right click to our 808 channel and select sidechain to this track. So now on the 808, you just go to the limiter, right click where it says sidechain right here, and we're gonna select kick. Now I have my kick labeled kick. So whatever you have your kick routed to, so say for example, if your kick was routed to insert 63, you're gonna see insert 60, 63 here instead. The way that I like to start, I like to turn all of these all the way down. And what that is going to do, it's gonna create an unnatural sound, but we're gonna adjust the release from that point. So in order to actually get compression, we need to turn the ratio up. I like to start at three to one which basically means for every three decibels that this plugin hears, it's only, it's only gonna release one decibel of volume. So from there, we turn the threshold all the way down, and now we're gonna get a very unnatural sounding side chain, but it's going to be very prominent, very easy for you to hear, which is, the, which is good for a starting point. There you could clearly hear that the kick is ducking the 808. So to get this to sound more natural, we're gonna increase this release knob. And there we go, we have a more natural sound. Now from there, what I like to do is adjust the threshold. I like to turn the threshold up because I don't actually like to duck the, the 808 all the way down. I just want the kick to breathe a little bit for the 808 to have a more natural response after the kick hits. That sounds a lot more natural to me. And you can see that it is ducking the 808 just a little bit. So let's listen before and after. You can hear an explosion of sound without the limiter. Now with it. It sounds more even, more balanced. And I do all that to taste. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube named Lifestyle Did It. I definitely recommend you guys watch his channel, but he actually recommended a tip, which is something that I've heard before. So on this website, it's a, I'll link it down below in the description, but it's a delay calculator, which allows you to type in the BPM of your song. So right now our BPM is 125, calculate reverb and delay times. And now it has actual milliseconds for your release time on your sidechain compression that you want to use if you want it to be exactly in time musically. These are, are really common uh, delay settings for uh, things like delay, reverb, uh, release time on compressors. So if you want a straight eighth note delay or a straight uh, or a triplet eighth note or a dotted eighth, you would use these times. I would be looking at 132 or 164. So it's saying 30, 30 milliseconds or 60 milliseconds. So let's take a look at what that looks like on here. So here's 30 milliseconds. That sounds pretty good, but for me, it's still not snappy enough. So let's go to 15 milliseconds. Ooh, almost got exactly 15. But this is about where we were at before, if I remember correctly. So from hearing that, I actually like something in between those two things. So let's go back to the website <laughs> and look at one of these in between, in between times. So I like something in between 15 and 30. So 
There's a 20 millisecond option. Let's try that. There's a 22.5 and a 20, 20 millisecond. So let's try 20 millisecond. This is for a triplet. That sounds perfect to me right there. So yeah, this website can be useful if you're trying to sound more musical with your uh, release times. You know, music is about feel and rhythm. I just kind of use my ears and go with what sounds good and natural to me. But yeah, that website is definitely useful for sure if you're trying to calculate exact release times. The reason I don't mess with attack or sustain is because I want this sidechain to happen immediately the strongest point of the signal is the beginning of the sound so that's what we're trying to get rid of in terms of it hitting these faders too hard if i were to sustain this the longer this 808 is going to be ducked and you're going to get a really unnatural sound that doesn't sound good to me at all So I'm not going to lie to you, a little bit of sustain right actually did sound a little pleasant to me. Uh, I think it is giving the kick a little bit more room. So again, it's all about using your ears and don't trust what I'm telling you. Go ahead and test and experiment. Never just take my word for it. You got to figure out what's best for you. So even right here, I just learned for myself that I don't necessarily always want the sustain all the way down. By increasing this just a little bit, I gave that kick a little bit more room to breathe while uh, still having this release time exactly where I want it. This next technique is actually what I use more often for a couple reasons. One, it looks cool. And two, instead of using a uh, compression, I'm just literally controlling the volume of my signal. Basically, you just go to your kick insert and we're gonna use Fruity Peak Controller. Now from there, I like to go to my bass bus because typically in my beats, I don't just have one bass instrument. I might have a sub, I might have an 808, I, have, I might have a synth bass, I might have an acoustic bass or an electric bass, and those things will switch on and off uh, through the arrangement. So typically I use a couple different basses, and that's getting really popular nowadays. So that's that might be something you wanna think about in terms of uh, your arrangements and making things a little bit more exciting. Switching off from, from an 808 to a synth bass has a really cool effect and it just brings a new mood into the track. So that's why I use a bass bus. That way I can adjust the overall low end of all of those different basses all, to get, all together in this bass bus and have them totally controlled. And this is where I would add my sidechain typically. So basically I'll go here onto the bass fader and I would link to control. And after you add your peak controller, you'll see the option here to link to your peak and you leave everything else the same. I'm gonna hit accept. And now you wanna copy where this fader is, copy the value and paste it onto your base. That way this ducking, these controls start exactly where this base fader is which is another reason why I like to use uh, a bass bus. That way I could go in and adjust the levels, the volumes of my individual faders for my low end without ruining the automation that we have going on here. So as, so as soon as you move this fader, it's going to delete the automation that we just linked to. Now you have control over the volume of these individual sounds or even just your 808 without ruining what you did with the peak controller. So we're gonna take this volume and turn it all the way down. So you can see that this volume is going all the way down and it's taking a little while to come back up. To make it come back up faster, just increase the decay all the way up. That'll make it snappy. And then the tension is basically the shape of that fader rising back up or going back, rising back up or going back down. So we're gonna adjust the tension last. And my camera keeps going out, so I'm just gonna eliminate the camera. So from there, you could adjust the tension if you want to. So going to the right, it's making the volume stay down longer. That's a pretty unnatural sound. So if we go to the left, sounds snappier. 
So now let's take a listen before and after. This is without it. And with it. It just really cleans it up. I'm going to reset the limiter again so that we can hear what this sounds like compared to the peak controller. Again, that's more of a personal taste thing. This next trick that I'm about to show you is just as clean as the P controller. Basically what we're gonna do, we are going to automate the volume. Just got a new subscriber. Thank you, Nick Lang, for subscribing. FL Studio has a section right here called Levels Adjustment. These are specifically meant for you to automate. Let's right click that. Let's create an automation clip off of the volume. And now we can automate the volume right where every kick hit is. And we are going to add a marker here. We're going to duck the kick, duck the 808 down and have it come back up. And you could slide this all the way down to here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Another setting that you could think about using when you're trying to zoom in really far if you go to options and file settings or project settings, actually, you'll see this PPQ uh, by default, it's set to 96. I actually, and already you can see how the grid adjusted right there. I have mine set to 144. So you can see that we're more zoomed in. Just something to keep in mind if you do do this, CPU will go up higher, especially if you have a lot of stuff loaded up. If you have a large screen, that might help you. You'll see that this is set to the middle position, which is exactly the volume that we have set here, which is why these controls are perfect for automating. That center point is exactly what you have this knob set to. So now you could adjust the volume of your instrument or your sample exactly the way that you want. You could gain stage it from here. And then from here, you can automate it going down or up. That's why these controls are set exactly to the middle like that, just for easy automation. So yeah, we want this to rise back up to its full volume, which is right in the middle. So you could go higher or lower than that if you wanted to. And then you just adjust this curve, which is the same thing as that tension curve that you saw in the peak controller to adjust how you want this uh, volume to be manipulated. And that was pretty good right there. Just, I was just messing around. Basically from there, you would just copy this. Kind of highlight, copy. You would shift, click, and slide. You have to click up on this menu. So there's just a very small place that you can do that with. All of these are the same exact automation clips. So whatever I adjust here, it'll adjust in all these places as well. So you don't have to go through and adjust each one or anything crazy like that. So basically what you really should do is add this to wherever you do have a kick because this might be ringing out a little longer into this kick. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift click this over to where all the kicks are. There you go, three different ways that you could sidechain. I would definitely say that the automation and the P controller are the cleanest. Those are what I recommend doing. Probably the easiest way, the most popular way is just throwing on the limiter and linking that and clicking sidechain here and just adjusting these elements right here. Especially if you're wanting to use that website to actually time out your release. Um, that website's pretty helpful for that for sure. So shout out to Lifestyle Did It and his channel. And definitely go over there and give him some support because he's uh, one of the guys that are consistently giving out good quality information and he's not just regurgitating what everyone else is saying he's coming up with stuff on his own he's coming up with stuff that actually works and he tests things out for himself i can tell that you know he's actually doing the things in his own production that he's out there trying to teach and not every channel is like that guys like you got to figure out who the real people are out here some people just don't know what they're talking about for real so He's one of the real ones. Definitely check him out for sure. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
definitely subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.